Life is a blank book. It is handed over to you the day you're born. Your parents carry it for you until when you start to differentiate between good and bad. The day you realize that they give it to you blank, you're supposed to write your own story. So you determine how your story will end. So, how is your story going to end? As someone who lived an average life, don't limit yourself. Many people limit themselves to what they think they can do. It is your road and yours alone. Others may walk it with you, but no one can walk it for you, my angel. You might have come from the same organization of this, or the same place as friends, but at the end of it all, it is your journey to walk you alone in the jungles of Africa. We have two animals, the lion and the gazelle. The jungles of Africa every day, a lion wakes up that knowing it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it starves to death. In the same jungles, a gazelle wakes up knowing it must outrun the fastest lion or it gets killed. So when the sun sets, both animals begin to run. They leverage on their strength to survive in the jungle. If someone said that survival is not for the fittest, today is wrong. Survival is for the smartest and the fittest today. Write what you think, all the things that you love in your life. Not what you want. There's a difference between what you want and what you love. Write all the things that you want. Don't ever think that it is late for you. This Colonel Sanders, the KFC guy, you know that he was going to commit suicide at the age of 65. Right? And he became a billionaire at the age of 76. KFC is all over the world. But he was giving up at 60. So it is never late for as long as, let me tell you, for as long as you still have a breath in your nose, in your lungs, it is never late. It is only late when you know you're going. My name is Simon Senkai. I want to welcome you once again to our breakfast meeting series. This is episode number three, where we look at the pillars of success, the pillars that make us who we are, or the pillars that help us become the people we are created to be. So this third episode, we are looking at the principle of passion. In the previous ones, we looked at the principle of purpose. Right now, we're going to look at the principle of passion and how it can help you, how you can find your passion, how you can focus on it and concentrate on it, and the value of finding your passion and how it can help you become the person that you're created to be. Thank you so much for supporting us. Uh, you can even find us on Facebook, Get Inspired with Simon Senkai, or subscribe on our YouTube channel, uh, Simon Senkai. See you there. Thank you so much. Don't miss. And initially, we looked at the principles of becoming the person that you're supposed to be. So the reason why we exist in life is not to make money, get such a beautiful woman, uh, have children, grow up, make money and die. All of us were born for something. And we all know that there is a difference between your job and your work. A job is something you're paid to do, work is something you're born to do. You can retire from your job, but you can't retire from your work. You can be expelled from your job or suspended, but no one can touch your work. So there is a difference between what you're doing right now and what you're born to do. The challenge is finding ourselves and concentrating on the things that we are supposed to do is a huge task for most of us. That is why one of my teachers used to say that some people die at the age of 25 and they get buried at 90. Meaning that between 25 and 90, they stopped living. The day you stop, uh, you stop striving for something in life, you're dead. Because at the end of the day, if I make money, it enriches me, yes. I become happy, yes. But the purpose of our lives is to be relevant to the communities or societies where we are. So uh, these breakfast meetings we aim at helping people find 
and tap into their potential to live beyond their jobs. Because right now as you are talking, you might lose the job tomorrow. Why our mercy is in the hands of our bosses. If he wakes up today and says, you don't have a job, there are few questions we can ask ourselves. Will you be able to hold the phone that you have, put on airtime that you always put on? Will you be able to drive the car that you drive? Will you be able to take your children to the schools where they are? So if you realize that if you lose a job today, your life can never be the same, that means you have a, lo you have a huge task ahead of you to think. But we can enjoy our jobs while doing our work. And in fact, the professions that we have make us effective at work. But what gives us efficiency at work is our work, the things that we are born to do. Your profession will give you the job, and your, work, uh, your gift or your work will give you the security. Security is not earned in the corporate world. Security is not earned through being a friend to your boss, being so close, knowing each other. Security is earned through efficiency. You are built to be efficient at work. Unfortunately, what makes us different from all other employees in an organization, there are those things that we can do the way we do them and other people cannot do them the way we do them. So in these breakfast meetings, we looked at the six principles to becoming the people that we are supposed to be. And if you miss, the first principle was the principle of purpose, finding ourselves, knowing why we exist, knowing the reason why we wake up every day. You know, it is very unfortunate for someone to wake up, leave the bed when they, don't, they wouldn't wish to leave, they go have a cold bath, they get angry in the morning. If they don't drive, they have to maneuver through to the main road to get a taxi, sit next to people they hate, people they don't know, people that don't even smell well. They endure the traffic and the jam just to make sure by seven or eight they're at work. Not because they wish to, but the rules at work, they're expected to be there by eight. Now they do the work that they hate. They sit with people they don't love and sit in an organization that they are tired of. At the end of the day, they expect to get money and succeed at the expense of hate. For what they are doing. So why are we working in life? All of us are looking for one thing, happiness. We just want to be happy. Whatever gives you happiness, that is the reason why you're working. But a few things that give people happiness, would love to have a happy family, happy and healthy family. You'd want to go back home, uh, be with your wife and your children in a happy home. You'd want to live in a conducive environment. That is my dream house. I would love to live in an environment that looks like that. Of course, these things make us happy. I would love to drive a simple car in my life. All these things make us happy. But you can sit in this kind of car and you don't find happiness. Fulfillment or happiness is when your life is relevant to someone, uh, someone else's life. There is a difference between being rich and being great. These are some of the things we, talk, we talked about in the previous sessions. I would say Chirumira or Mugaga is rich. The guy has money. And there is this other man called Bobby Wine. He's great. But he doesn't have the money that Chirumira has. In fact, if they told us, to, uh, if someone comes and tells us today that Chirumira is passing by, no one here would even bother to look there to see if the man is passing. But if they said Bobby Wine is there registering, I have to keep to first keep quiet and stop to let your attention be taken by him. He doesn't take your attention because he's rich, because he's great. We said greatness is a product of influence. 
you can't be great unless you command a lot of influence. Influence is the product of significance. To command influence, you must be important in your society. Significance is a product of value. You don't just wake up and say you're significant if you don't have value. People must find value in you that makes you important in society. Value is a product of refinement. You can't have value unless you've worked upon something. You know, talent is given naturally, but skill is perfected by hours and hours of practicing the craft. So, Messi has a gift but every day must be at the pitch training to get the skill that drives the talent. So, value is a product of refinement. Refinement is a product of uniqueness. We are not the same. I can't be you, you can't be me. You can even try to do what I do, but you can't do it the way I do it. That is the difference. Uniqueness is a product of a gift. And the gift is given by God. Whether you believe or not, if you want to be great, you must ask your creator what your gift is. Because all of us were created with something inside. But the problem is, our jobs have trapped us so much. And we've always focused on running after money, getting money, and we even forget to live. There are two things in a human. I'm just giving a recap of what happened what transpired in the previous sessions. Two things in a human. You have the mind and you have the spirit on the other side. The mind believes in facts. The spirit believes in the truth. That is the faith. That is why in your, religious, uh, your religions you urge to move, by, uh, not to move by sight, by, by, but by, by faith. So on this hand you have your mind and on this side you have the spirit. Your mind believes in facts, your spirit believes in the truth. The fact is, you're seated here. But the truth is, you're not supposed to be here. And after this session, you'll go. So which means, facts do change, but the truth will always remain. So, the fact is, we are here. But the truth is, we're not going to be here in the next two hours. So if you manage your life basing on the facts of your life, it means you're going to live an average life. Those people that have done extraordinary things ain't those that are so unique from us, but those are the people that have always believed in who they are and listened to that spirit, the voice deep inside their, uh, the realm of their spirits. They follow it and believe in it. All of us here uh, tend to have a, a saying, a chintuchang Something told me not to go. Something told me to, to talk to this person. That's something, it's what uh, uh, the whites call a calling. Find your calling. It is a calling because deep inside your spirit, it keeps on reminding you of who you're supposed to be. But because of the facts in your mind, you keep on fighting it. And the time comes when the mind wins and the spirit loses. And when the spirit loses, you lose the direction. You'll only be working for money. You won't even have any reason why you're working apart from getting fees for your children and living a good life. But our lives must go beyond just getting money. Our lives, all of us here can be great. All of us here. You know, I didn't wake up and uh, do something for you to know me. I never focused on people. I focused on finding myself. Some of the people that have come to know who I am have known me not because I promoted myself, but because I mastered, or I focused so much and concentrated on what I'm doing. So when you focus so much on what you are born to do, then it means other people are going to find you. In the previous session, I gave an example of the concept of a seed. When a mango tree, when a mango seed grows into a tree, no one nourishes it with water and fertilizers. It struggles on its own to look for the nutrients in the soil. But when it becomes a tree with fruits, one has, it has four principles. First, never calls people to eat the fruits. Never takes the fruits to the market. 
Every season it will bear the fruit. Why? Even if it is deep in the forest and people see the fruits from a distance, they will always create a way to the tree. So which means a mango tree's focus is not on the people that are going to eat the fruits. It's supposed to be on producing the right fruits. When you have the fruits on you, you're going to attract hundreds of people to come and enjoy your fruits. And they can't enjoy it for free. The moment they enjoy it and it makes meaning, has meaning in their lives, they're going to nourish you with what you're looking for. A mango tree is looking for security, not to be cut down. It is judged by its fruits. Even if you buy a place somewhere and you're a new person in the village and you want to cut the tree down, they all see and the people around might come to you to plead that don't cut that tree. Why? Because it has good fruits for our children. So it is looking for the security. So in, to, in order to get the security, it has to give fruits. So all of us here, all of us here are seeds. But for so long, you have sat on your seed. You've been made to believe that your work, your job is your work. When you find people telling you uh, uh, he's in retirement, a mango tree will never go into retirement unless you cut it down. Those people that are in retirement, they never found out who they are. There is a saying, once a teacher, once a soldier, always a soldier and a teacher. Why? A teacher dies a teacher, a soldier dies a soldier. You can't go into retirement and say, I retired. The challenge is you finding that something that you can do beyond. All of us have work, have jobs, have places of work where we go and do some things. But right now we are here to do the things that we are born to do. And let me tell you, there is nothing that pays in life like a gift. I mean, Lionel Messi earns a billion shilling a, a week, just minus other earnings. Just a billion shilling a week. Not even the President of the United States earns, I think, between 400 and 500,000 US dollars a year. But Messi earns a billion shilling a week just from his presence at the pitch. Why? You can't hide gift. That is why when people call us to talk to them, to present to them and you tell them I need three million shillings, they think you're expensive. No, you can't hire a gift. You can only hire someone. But it, if you don't find the gift in you, you'll only earn a salary. A salary is a short-term solution to a long-term problem. So, we must think of doing things that can expand us and make us more happy and what gives fulfillment and happiness right now i'm happy i'm excited because i'm talking to you why i don't judge a day by the habits i've done but how many seeds i've planted i'm planting seeds i'm happy because i'm doing something that i love even if they told they tell me at my workplaces that you're ex expelled i can't cry my life cannot stop i would just say bye to them and continue with my life. Why? Because I know exactly who I am, what I'm supposed to do, and what I'm supposed to be, where I'm supposed to be. So the difference between where I am today and where I'm supposed to be tomorrow is simply a process. And what gives us inspiration and motivation is our ability to continue seeing our end at our beginning. So before I start, I want to ask you, can you see your end now? Or your end is at your workplace. It is not bad to work for someone. But it is so unfortunate to work for someone and you forget to work for yourself. The jobs that we have are platforms to, make or to, to help us become the people that we are created to be. I want you to love your jobs. But you must know that one day one day, if it has not happened to you, it will happen. One day, 
you lose that job. What next? That is the hardest question. So we looked at these principles of success. And the first principle is the principle of purpose. And today we are going to examine the principle of passion. These are the six P's to finding yourself, to finding meaning in your life. The principle of planning, we shall look at that. People, persistence, and prayer. Why prayer lasts? Because the extraordinary exploits are done by extraordinary people who believe in an extraordinary God. We shall look at it in details. And after that, you realize that prayer is not a religious activity, like so many people take it to be. You don't pray because you're religious. You pray because you must. You know, when you don't understand the beginning of things, you can't even know the process of things. Human. They just removed a few syllables to merge the word human. But initially it was humus man. But the English found it hard to pronounce humus man always. So they had to remove a few syllables and combine the word to make human. Humus means that man means spirit. In fact, the Hebrew word for man is ish, I-S-H, meaning a spirit. Man doesn't mean a guy who is like you, who has things there between yourself. Man means a spirit. That is why even a female spirit is man. So a humus man, power was given to a humus man, that is a spirit with a dark body. That is why God cannot lift this laptop. Religions have trapped people and hold, have hold people in captive. Have hold people captive. They are slaves. God cannot lift this laptop. This power is only given to a spirit that has a body. God can only help me use it if I know what to use it for. We'll get into that when we reach the principle of prayer. That is why I ask you, amid these soul challenges and your busy schedules, kindly don't miss. Because there are few things today that do matter in our lives. We live in a negative world. When you read newspapers, they're full of negative stories. When you try to go on social media, full of negativity. When you try to tune into radio stations, even those programs that can make a difference get few minutes. Life is so funny. The things that could have an impact on society are given less time. And the things that are a bit useless, they have a lot of time. Why? Because success is never given its end. So we'll sit with people every day, relate with people who are negative. They are only talking about negative things. So if you don't program your subconscious mind to keep uh, positivity in it, you'll be taken up by the negative around you. Where others see a path, you see a wall. Where others see light, you see darkness. There are people who are like that. If you share with them an opportunity, I want to do ABCD, the first thing they do is to look for what is negative in, that, in it. I want to start up a poultry farm. The first thing they will talk about their diseases, poultry diseases. I mean, how are you going to manage poultry diseases? They can't ask you, how are you going to utilize the profits from the business? Why? Because naturally they are negative. Naturally we are negative people. So, the most important thing is knowing why you are born. There are two most important days in our lives, the day you are born and the day you find out why. It's unfortunate that someone clocks 50, 60, not knowing why they even exist. So why are you still breathing? Right now there is someone in Mulago fighting for the breath that we have for free. Right now there is someone whose life is ending just now. Why are you still alive? You're not alive to eat food and have fun. Your life has something for me. If you don't find it and give it to me, you're not going to get what you want. Because we can't run with money. Money runs so fast. We can only force or follow our jobs and focus on our jobs. Because our work can run faster than money. 
you can be seated at home and someone gives you a call, hello, how are you? Would you come and talk to us? That means you have concentrated on your work and your work has ran faster than money. So it is now uh, trying to find money for you. So what is your work? Why do you exist? Why are you here? You're not simply a teacher. You're not simply a doctor. You're not simply an accountant. You're not, those are just platforms for us to become that the, the people were created to be. I used to talk to teachers somewhere in Chisubi who were very proud that they were teaching in a first class school. And one teacher said, some of the challenges we have, we earn less. But I asked him, how much do you earn a month? And he told me 1.7. In Chisubi there. Then I asked him, is that money enough for you? He said, it's not. Then I said, what are you going to do to make sure that you get more? He said, you know, I have to get more schools to teach. I asked him, for how long have you been teaching? He told me, 16 years. 16 years he's been teaching. And was so proud that he's been teaching. Unfortunately, he was teaching, he was teaching my subject, the subject that I love so much, economics. Then I remembered that when I was still in senior five, I had a textbook, Basic Economics by Taewa. And Taewa used to teach there at SMAC. Then I asked this guy, you teach economics, what are some of these textbooks you recommend to your students to have? And Taewa was the second. And I was shocked. Among these four books, I asked him, do you have your book in there? He said no. I told him, but for 16 years you've been teaching, for God's sake, economics is not stagnant, it is dynamic. For 16 years you have enough experience to write your own book, make a deal with the administration that your book is 20,000 shillings, 5,000 shillings remain in the office. The brothers would love it to have money, free money. So they would put it on their syllabus, recommend to all A-level students, buy this book, is a must. And they'll buy, you'll get money. You won't even be concerned about whether they've paid or not. So some of the things that trap us from where we are is the job mindset. Walk someone's path. Your path is unique. If you don't find it, you live an average life. So the principle of passion. Passion is that desire that is stronger than death. You know, we have Muslims here, we have Christians here. The Muslims believe in Nabi Muhammad sallallahu Not so? And the Christians believe in Jesus. None of these people left a building in their names. Can you imagine even up to now when I pray, I pray in one of, their, one of those guys' names. But the guy left over 2,000 years ago. Over 2,000 years ago. I still pray in his name. Why? the greatest leaders of all time. And they'll always be because generations now have not learned anything from these guys. You find people in church, someone has been praying, asking God to do something. When they move out of the church, they tell others it's impossible. But they've been praying for something. It means they're lying to themselves. In fact, let me tell you, it is not the Jesus that they want. People don't go to church because they want Jesus. They want what Jesus promised when you believe in him. He, be, he said, when you believe in me, I'm the truth, path, and everything. If you believe in me, you'll be able to. So, by eye, they are scheming, but he's seeing them. He's looking at them. They don't go there because they believe in him. They go there because they know the only way. They believe the only way they can get what they want is through him. But the Bible says, Seek first the kingdom of God and everything shall be added unto you. What is the kingdom? Before 1980, a young man by then, Ronald Mwenda Mutebi II, was in the UK. Trying, was trying to help himself go to school to study law and mass communication and journalism. He was struggling after his father had died. 
But according to traditions, he had already performed a function that makes him a crown prince, a prince ready to take over a kingdom. His father had taken lots of people in the UK who were rich, filthy rich. But they ignored the young man. And he was struggling. If you study, do some research, he struggled a lot as an individual to educate himself. Not because his father didn't have friends that had money. But you know when you die, people ignore your children. That is why you're supposed to do whatever you, have, you must do when you're still alive. No one is going to take over to take care of your children. Because people have their own other responsibilities. Now, Ronald Moenam Tebi, a crown prince then, was struggling not because he wasn't a king, but he was a king without a kingdom. So when things failed and he was called upon, came in 1984, joined the people, mobilized the people in the bushes there, who had refused to participate in the war. And in 1993, he found his kingdom and he was crowned. The day he was crowned in 1993, they started serving him because he had found his kingdom. When you find your kingdom, whatever you're looking for begins to come to you. So if they believe, if the books of religion that we believe in believe or assert that we are kings, and we are reminded to find our kingdoms and everything else shall be added unto us, then what is your kingdom? I'm a king in my kingdom. I found my kingdom and that is why I'm able to stand before you. The question is, what is your kingdom? What is that something that makes you different from the other person? What makes you different is not the schools you've gone to, the people you sit with or where you work or where you're born. No, what makes you different? Is that something you can do that not any other person on earth can do? You have your prince on your thumb. There has never been a person with the same prince and there will never be, not even your children. Why? Because there is something unique hidden inside of you. If you don't find it, you will still be average. So that is the principle of purpose. So the principle of passion. Passion is a sign of purpose. You can't find passion unless you know who you are. Passion is automatic. You don't force it. You don't force yourself to love something. No. Passion is that automatic thing. The desire that is created inside of you that makes you feel to, do, uh, feel to want to do something amidst all odds or challenges. So you can't have that passion inside of you unless you know why you were born. If you take me to Kenya and I talk to people and you don't pay me, I don't cry and I never even get disappointed. Why? Because what I do is something that I love. It's not something that I force myself to do. It's something that I yearn every day to do. Whenever I get an opportunity to talk to people, I don't care whether you pay me or not. Why? Because I love what I'm doing. So passion is that something that ar arises inside of you. That desire, that burning desire to continue doing something. Amid this thought, when, when all people are saying, no, it's impossible, you keep on believing it's possible. To be the person I am today, I've seen people and how they think. That is, uh, actually, it has even helped me to be who I am. I've seen people that have underrated me. I've seen people that never believed in me. I've seen people that have abused me when I was beginning, at the beginning of my steps. But I knew that such things would happen. But because I loved more of what I do, I continued. I was working with Save the Children Uganda. I joined the Straight Talk Foundation. We started Young Empowered and Health. The campaigns of Be a Man, True Manhood, Something for Something Love were created by us. I worked with various organizations until when I joined Wins at Women Consultants. Those days, they gave me a small car as a marketing person. 
and the driver. But the first time the guy gave me an opportunity to be on air, to go on radio, to do a program on behalf of the company. The first time I sat on I, in the studios of Kaboz, that is when I realized that I've, I've always been looking for money. The reason why I left all those organizations was because I, was, I could always get another organization that was paying me better. Believing that if I get more money, my problems will be solved. But every time I could get a job that was bigger than the other one, I realized I had to look for another one. That guy of Windsor looked into my CV and said, but you man, when will you ever focus? Because when I look at your CV, you've not, some organization you've not even been, you've not even been there for six months. I mean, I worked with Straight Talk Foundation for four months and I got a job in Save the Children. I left DSW, that is the German Foundation for the Population, for Save the Children because of money, but DSW had made me, had trained me, had invested in me. But I left because of money, until when someone had to, tell, to sit me down and tell me, it is not how much you earn, but how well you plan for what you earn to get what you want. So if you keep on running after money, a job is a short-term solution to a long-term problem. Jobs are like carrying buckets. Have you read the pipeline, the, prince, the parable of the pipeline? Find it. You know, if you want to be a leader, you must be a reader. If you want to earn more, you must learn more. There's no magic. The parable of the pipeline. These two guys were carrying buckets, car fetching water for the, for the community, for their community. And they were paid highly because they could uh, walk long distances to get water, carrying buckets. One of, the, uh, one of them... Uh, Good swellings in the hands and could not lift. Then he told a friend, Can we think of a certain other way of bringing water without feeling all this pain? The other guy said, You're stupid. We have an opportunity, other people are looking for it, and for you, you're thinking of doing something that is impossible. Then this, the other guy decided to dig a pipeline. It took him months to dig a pipeline from the water source to the community. And the day the pipeline reached the community, it stopped working. He put people there to manage uh, water, to, to, to manage the sales, and could only sleep, come in the evening to calculate his profits and go back. The other guy who was carrying buckets could not do so again because, I mean, water was near the people. So what we are doing right now, you must ask yourself, are you carrying a bucket? or you're digging a pipeline. The, for, the unfortunate bit about carrying buckets, when you have a smaller bucket, you're looking for a bigger bucket. When you get slightly bigger bucket, you're looking for another bigger bucket. Thinking that the more you get a bigger bucket, the more your problems are solved. Which is wrong. When you get two million shillings, God is so funny, he never wastes. He brings for you challenges of four million shillings. When you, get, when you get 4 million shillings, he brings challenges of 8 million shillings. And that money will never be enough. So you just have to learn how to use that which you get to get something out of it. But the challenge is if you don't know what you want to get out of it, then it's useless. How many of you still have uh, salaries of the previous two months on your account? Of course, no. Why? Because as it comes, in accounts, it is FIFO. <laughs> eh? I would say garbage in, garbage out. First in, first out. As it comes in, it goes. But we can't live like that. I mean, you pay 600,000 shillings on rent, you drive a car, you buy fuel. At the end of the day, you don't have a single coin. So if you don't think then it means you're not, you're not going to live. So that's why if you quit going after what you want and you still be happy, you have never found your passion. So it's always good to have reasons why you must stay alive. People have so many reasons why they must stay alive, but you, ha you have to find one reason why you must die. Find something that you're willing to die for. Paul used the word, I'm obligated. I am obligated. Whatever you want, 
should be like an obligation in your life. When you reach that state, you have found what they call true passion for something. Have you watched a video of Derek Redmond? Derek Red Redmond, this, those days, was like Hussein Bolt of today. Got on the race, and everyone knew he was going to make it. As they started, he had started running, and of course, faster than everyone, and felt an ache in the muscle, and had to stop. His muscle got torn, was torn, had to stop, and felt a lot of pain. His father was seated in the, in the crowd. He had to find his way to come. They started, they, they tried to fight him not to reach the race lines, but he managed his way to his son. He wanted to carry his son off the pitch. The son said, no, I must finish my race. He started, he helped him, lifted him up and helped him. They started to walk. The entire the entire crowd stood up and started clapping for the man. They were not even focused on who had won the race. The entire crowd focused on the man who was just walking slowly, in pain while crying. Until when he finished the race. He made a lot of news and made a lot of money more than the person who won the race. That is what they call passion. That even amidst challenges and great pain, you're willing to start your life again. You know, all of us fail. Not even me who is talking about these things that I'm immune to failing. I fail every day. I get disappointed and frustrated every day. But life is not about how many times you have tried and failed, but how many times, how many of those times you're willing to lift yourself up again with the same strength, courage and focus, determination and passion to keep moving forward. So that is the most important thing. So, you must reach an extent of feeling like it is an obligation to you to fulfill that which is hidden inside of you. So one day, the disciples were worried about what to eat and Jesus said, my meat is to the will and purpose of my Father. I learned from those, these two people, not because I'm too religious, To be honest with you, I have a religion, but I f believe in more a having a relationship with my God than just being a religious man. Because in my relationship with my God, there are some things I know I cannot do. You know, what you are, religion is what you are in darkness, in private. So are you religious? What you do when no one is seeing you, that is your religion. That's what I believe. So if you realize that what you do is not what the people see outside, then that means you're lying to God. So when someone finds their passion, their purpose, something arises in them in form of passion, more important than money, food, sleep, TV, and comfort. Someone is willing to pay 100,000 shillings for a concert somewhere, but they can't find love to pay 20,000 shillings to buy a book. Why? Because they look at it as a waste of time. Those whites abuse us, that abused us that if you want to hide knowledge from the black man's, put it in writing. There are people in Makere University who boast to have been there for 30 years. They clean these books, they organize them, they put them in the right shelves, and they keep them in the right order. But they have never read a single word in, one, in, a, in any of them. But they are proud to have served a university for 30 years. So if you're willing to pay 200,000 shillings just to get some short happiness, what about something that can have an impact on your life? I mean, this hall would be full. Why aren't they here? And there are some who, who might have come here just to see what is here, I mean. Okay, let's go there, you know. So if 
you're not willing to feel some pain for your own life. Whether the organization paid for you, whether you paid you for yourself, we thank you so much for coming. But I want you to go back and ask yourself, why do you exist? Why do you want to live like this? The, the, like the rest of people, when you go, um, when you stand uh, on the side of the road, uh, you, you will see people who are lost. They are moving up and down. Go on the streets of Kampala. They are moving up and down. They are lost. And they are not willing to be helped. Why? Because such things, people don't pay for them. They want to pay for those things that make them happy and smile and laugh and drink. I do believe that you guys are not going to be the same. You're going to think differently. Even if you don't come back here, but begin to work on your life. Begin to think different. If you want to have something you've never had, you've got to do something you've never done. Train yourself to wake up at five. Train yourself to sleep late in the midnight. Train yourself, actually, put your life in discomfort. Do only those things. Try to do only those things that make you uncomfortable. And avoid those things that make you comfortable. I mean, someone sits in a place from morning, you know, from morning to five, that time is for your boss. But from five to ten, that is when you begin to work on yourself. But what you do, actually, what you do between five and ten defines who you're going to be in life. Some people are shooting pool, are in bars, are somewhere in traffic. Up to 10. By the time they get home, they are tired and they eat food at 10. Heavy. <laughs> then they sleep. By 5, a bell rings and they have to wake up, but they're feeling, they're not feeling well because they ate, they took a heavy meal. But they have to force themselves out of bed. I'm tired of that life. Honestly, I'm tired of that life, personally. And I believe you also can get tired of that life. We can do something that can give us what we want. The, the problem is, at the beginning of your journey, it is too hard. But it pains more when it's about to get through. Have you seen a woman carrying a baby for nine months? It is discomfort, but it is not the discomfort as, as such. The most greatest pain comes when she gets into labor. Scientists have, proof, uh, have pro pro proved it that uh, between a woman and a man, if a woman is not pregnant and she gets pain that reaches 15%, I don't know how they calculate it, 15%, both you, me and her, we die automatically. If you get pain on your body and reaches 15%, you die automatically. But when a woman is giving birth, pain reaches 45 plus. And they don't die. <laughs> so it pains more when it's about, you know, when a woman is feeling a lot of pain, it means it's a sign that she's about to be happy. If she gives up that time, then she, she won't get the happiness she wants. But if she persists and accepts the pain, embraces the pain, but accepts to go through it, when the baby comes out and the baby is put on, uh, put, put on her body, she smiles. Every woman smiles. That is what I'm told. Why? Because she's overcome something. And from that day, she forgets the pain. And she never feels anything painful at all. That is the blessing God gave them. When the baby comes out naturally, she never feels anything again. That is why they forget and get pregnant again. <laughs> because if they could remember that pain, trust me, they wouldn't go beyond one child. So, accept to go through pain. This guy was born on his job until when he discovered his purpose. Remember, Peter was a fisherman. That was his job. When he found his purpose, he left his fishing business and he joined his true work. Preached in the prison, preached out of prison. And even when they were stoning him, he continued to preach. That is what we call passion. When you find your purpose, you automatically find your passion. 
We can never change the world who have great impact on our generation until when we say enough is enough. I don't care what people think or say or do. I'm going to do this. I told Shiba even if two people come, let's talk to those two people. Because many were called but few were selected. Knowledge and understanding is not for everyone. You have to pay a price for it. Some people accept to live an average life and to be where they are. And you can't force them to grow. There are some people, even if you fight so much to change their lives, they are contented with where they are. But I don't think we are created to be where we are. So what do other people say about this? Zuckerberg says, if you just work on stuff that you like, you're passionate about it. Steve Jobs, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by the dogma, which is living with uh, results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. One day all of us will die. I don't know when, but one day all of us will die. But the question is, how are you going to die? Life is a blank book. It is handed over to you the day you're born. Your parents carry it for you until when you start to differentiate between good and bad. The day you realize that they give it to you blank, you're supposed to write your own story. So you determine how your story will end. So, how is your story going to end? As someone who lived an average life, don't limit yourself. Many people limit themselves to what they think they can do. It is your road and yours alone. Others may walk it with you, but no one can walk it for you, my angel. You might have come from the same organization of this, or the same place as friends, but at the end of it all, it is your journey to walk you alone. Success has to have passion in it. If you stop what you're doing and still be happy, then you don't have passion. I summarize with a true story in the jungles of Africa. We have two animals, the lion and the gazelle. The jungles of Africa every day, the lion wakes up that knowing it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it starves to death. In the same jungle, the gazelle wakes up knowing it must outrun the fastest lion or it gets killed. So when the sun sets, both animals begin to run. They leverage on their strength to survive in the jungle. If someone said that survival is not for the fittest, today is wrong. Survival is for the smartest and the fittest today. If you're not smart enough, survival is not for you. So I want to challenge you this morning and I leave you with a, a simple assignment. Even if you are not here in the previous session, we want at the end of these pillars for you to be able to find who you are, to be able to define exactly what you're supposed to do. And if possible, if you're willing, we work together to see how you can start it. We can share ideas on how we can start it. The intention of these breakfast meetings, we want to formulate groups active groups where we meet and share you present to us your idea and we look at it and evaluate it and advise on the best way possible to reach your idea or to realize your idea so i want you to think when to think about this when you go back write what you think all the things that you love in your life not what you want there's a difference between what you want and what you love Write all the things that you want. Don't ever think that it is late for you. This Colonel Sanders, the KFC guy, you know that he was going to commit suicide at the age of 65. Right? And he became a billionaire at the age of 76. KFC is all over the world. But he was giving up at 60. So it is never late for as long as, let me tell you, as long as you still have a breath in your nose, in your lungs, 
it is never late. It is only late when you know you're going. And people don't regret then the things they did, but the things they could do but refused to do. You keep on postponing what is inevitable. You know, it is like a man postponing getting married. If you're not religious, then it means one day you must. So you can't postpone what is going to happen. He who absconds from all lives to fight another day. We must face our fates today or else be destroyed by them. So thank you so much. Next time we shall be looking at the principle of planning into details and we'll see how you can start. We want to move together step by step and at the end of these sessions, I promise you, I've never believed so much in people but all the people I talk to are, are never the same again because I'm in my kingdom. So I want us to find our kingdoms at the end of these sessions and we shall have practical working sessions at the end of these sessions to evaluate your ideas to discuss and see how you can start thank you so much i wish you a blessed weekend and good time in your life and families god bless you